Okay, moving ahead with our assembly now that we've got our first part in there. I'm going to go ahead and um, create a second assembly tab. Okay, and the reason why I'm going to do this is I, I just want to find an excuse basically to do a sub assembly. The reality of this little toy train is so small and there's really not that many parts that I'd, I'd just be inclined to go ahead and assemble it and just have all the parts in there. But trying to keep, teach you guys about um, different principles that can help you when you have a, a bigger product or project with a lot of things. Um, you can choose to not assemble everything in one assembly, okay? but break it into components, kind of smaller chunks, where you do what's called a sub-assembly. And um, there's not really that I'm aware of um, at my level, like this set hard rule of exactly when you should do it. But I think you'd find that people may decide to use a subassembly based on um, how the product's going to be manufactured. So what does that manufacturing in the actual building of that product look like? Um, I think another thing is just, um, you know, potentially CAD designers. Um, trying to be efficient and how is it going to be easy for them to get the whole thing assembled. And so if you would have a repetitive um, series of connections, so for example, where I'm going to find my excuse is if you think about the wheel, I've got four of them, right? And the axle peg that holds the wheel on, there's then four of those. So this relationship between the axle peg and the wheel, um, it's going to be used four times. So do I need to do that four times in here, or could I go create it once and then pop that sub-assembly in four times? Um, so that's kind of the idea. So just so you can see that we're putting technically an assembly into an assembly as, a part, as opposed to a part into an assembly. So I'm going to open the second assembly and we're going to kind of repeat. This is a good review. Um, bringing in the first piece. So I'm going to bring in a part, which is my wheel. And these extra wheels are just from when I had patterned in my part studio. So there's wheel. Um, I'm gonna hit the little green check mark and it actually doesn't lock to the origin when you hit that. It, it goes right to where it was built in the part studio relative to that origin. So I may have misspoken before. All right, so I'm gonna just left click once and get that triad moved to the middle. And then I'm going to send that to the origin. Um, and then I am going to fix that within this assembly. Okay, so within this little assembly, the wheel is now fixed. I can't drag it and move it. Now I'm going to insert the axle peg, and I'm just going to left click here and then accept it. Okay, this piece now needs to get inserted. Um, now there, there are different types of um, relationships that can be created, and this is one of the ways that Onshape is definitely different from my first CAD program learning inventor um, is that they're really trying to get you to use exactly one relationship per part when you're trying to get that part in place um, where inventor we may you know use a few relationships a few mates or flushes things like that with some of our early simple projects to get um, all the degrees of freedom locked down so it can't move anymore Okay, and that's, we really, if you're having to use a second one, we probably missed the right way to do it within Onshade. So, um, if you want to learn uh, a little bit more about these, and st that's not going to be my area of focus, if you hit, um, here, let me go back, if you hit the Learning Center, okay, get into the Learning Center for Onshape, go to the Self-Paced Courses, go to the Assemblies, and then... Uh, try following this Onshape Assemblies course. They're going to talk about that. They're actually going to get you guys to assemble this. Um, they show you how to make a copy of it and walk through some of the steps. And it's just a really good little teaching tool for you. Okay, so for here, um, I don't want the axle and the wheel to be kind of like fully fixed. I want the wheel to be able to spin around the axle. So I'm going to use what's called the Revolute Mate. All right, so I turn on that mate. And then I, there are these things called mate connectors. So if I kind of move my mouse around and hover around the parts, there's, there's already set pieces of geometry. You know, like, um, you know, there's all these different concentric circles and at different depths. And so that's kind of creating the geometry of the part creates these reference points where a quote-unquote mate connector can live.
And so it's always possible to create make connectors where they're not already at, but for us, we're going to be able to kind of use the ones that show up. So um, right here on this surface, okay, uh, kind of in plane with that edge, um, I'm going to get that one. And, and I've got to pay attention to the orientation of that make connector too, because depending on where you hover, you may get that to be in a different direction. All right, so I'm going to left click. It didn't highlight. I'm going to left click again. There you go. The whole part highlighted orange, and that lets me know that it kind of it locked in that selection. I'm going to come over to the other part. I'm going to turn this way a little bit. And I want to get a mate connector that's, um, you know, coplanar to this underside. And so basically um, either that circle or that circle is going to work and it's kind of showing up right where I want it. So I'm going to click here. And sometimes you have to click twice. I'm going to click again. Okay, and it just snapped and moved. I'm going to change my zoom level so you guys can see. I'll rotate a little bit so you can see that this little lip is um, on the outside of the wheel it didn't get pulled in so it's kind of flush where I wanted it to be or mated um, so that looks good here's a cool thing you can hit this little play button and that will animate anything that is still movable in reference to these two because they're not fully locked together right so um, I it should be able to spin okay so that looks good I like it. Um, it, it let's say it didn't snap the way I want there is this flip primary axis button Okay, so maybe it had it, um, basically those that second mate connector is kind of flipping around. Um, and let's see, that's something else. That's a secondary axis. I don't need to do that, but you can kind of change, the reorientate the other axis. So we're good here. I'm going to hit the green check mark, and that's it. So I've got my sub-assembly that we're going to use in my first assembly. So now I'm going to insert... Um, instead of being under my part studio, I can come over here to my assembly. And I just did that, so it's still generating preview, but I can click on it. And then I'm going to come over here and click. And I could create more of them. So click here, click here, and there'd be four of them, right? So uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going to accept that and move on. All right, so now I want the Revolute made again. Um, and I really want the wheel to turn relative to the train body. Um, technically, these all, you know, they can kind of move, they're going to be able to rotate, but um, I'm going to, I just want to do this, so I'm going to use the Revolute again, and I'm going to focus on the wheel and the body. Okay, so on the train body, I want um, this surface here on the side, and I want that mate connector right there in the center. Okay, and I, for some reason, I don't know if it requires a double click, maybe it does. Um, sometimes I have to click a second time in order to get it to highlight to let me know that it actually accepted that selection. All right, so now I do have both the train, or sorry, the wheel and the axle peg, and I got to make sure that I'm kind of getting the ones to highlight that I want. So like, that's the axle peg, but I really want the wheel. So I'm going to hover over the wheel to make sure those edges are lining up, and then I'll kind of come in and look for that make connector to show up. Um, I'm on that surface and right there. So I'm going to click, click again, and boom. Now, this is just something it does. It's focusing on the wheel and the body, but this relationship still exists between the axle peg and the wheel. And so as soon as I accept it, that's going to snap and come back to where it goes. Um, again, I can kind of preview and hit play. The wheel spins. It looks like where it, sh where it should be. Um, and we do just, you know, this is kind of beginner CAD. Uh, I, I know I've got it you know, rubbing right up against there. I don't have any kind of clearance between the wheel and the body, but that's, you know, for now, we're good with that. All right, we're going to accept that. See how the axle peg jumped right back in. And now you can test by grabbing the wheel and trying to rotate it, and it moves, okay? And the axle peg doesn't move at the same time because the axle peg is free to rotate, you know, or to not rotate in this case when the wheel rotates, right? Because that they had that relationship, so... Um, basically, I'm going to repeat that three more times, and I'll have all of my wheels on. All right, there we have it. All four are on.